Hello my dear friends, welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Sarita, really glad to see you here today. I have a candle from Homeworks. It's one that I haven't heard so many people give a lot of buzz to and it could be because very few people bought it, I don't know. I believe this was a QVC TSV, which is today's special value kind of candle maybe a year or two ago. And I don't know if it's come back to the website in any other formal sense. And the candle in question is this one. It is Frosted White Pine, which as you can tell, I got from TJ Maxx for $16.99. And I got this maybe in December, I wanna think. Um, I was kind of making the rounds the last month and a half before Christmas, TJ Maxx and Marshalls, all the various different places, and they had a lot of Christmas homeworks candles. Um, and I was lucky to have gotten a few that were a little bit more obscure for the TJ Maxx Marshall drop, like Partridge in a Pear Tree, which I think um, very few people got, and this one, which was Frosted White Pine. Um, and I got it because Frankly, there were a ton of Christmas candles sitting on those shelves, and most all of them I thought were good. Um, a couple of them were gross <laughs> for me, for my personal preferences, but I would say that most of them smelled at least decent. They were good Christmas conceptuals. I have been saying, though, that I'm noticing Harry Slatkin has a big range of, especially Christmas candles, that I put into the category pleasant and adequate. <laughs> which is to say they're not super brilliant, but they're not terrible either. And it, between us, I do suspect that if the performance on many of those candles were better, if they were a little bit stronger and the nuances came across a little bit brighter, I think that many of those candles that I now think are pleasant and adequate may be more than that. <laughs> Unfortunately, with the performance and the way that they smell, kind of the weakness of many of them, I'm just kind of like, okay, maybe, maybe not, you know, that kind of thing. I got this one because I thought that it was slightly better than pleasant and adequate. And I'm very happy to say that upon burning it, I do think that it's slightly better than pleasant and adequate. I don't know that it's like mind blowing or life changing. I don't know that it's hoard worthy, but I do think it's one of the better tree fragrances that I've smelled from Harry Slatkin and maybe just across the board. So let's talk about it. Frosted White Pine, and this review is primarily for posterity. It's for people who are gonna encounter this either if Harry brings it to the shop.com website, if QVC brings it back, if it comes back to Marshalls and TJ Maxx, obviously like at the end of this year or in a, in a following year. So less so for all of you right now because I looked on the website and it's not readily available. Um, okay, so fragrance notes are white pine, fresh spruce, sparkling bergamot, and white patchouli. <clears throat> which are interesting. Pine, spruce, bergamot, and patchouli. Well, any time that you see a sparkling bergamot and a patchouli or a vetiver or anything like that, it's kind of gonna go into a men's cologne profile. And looking at those notes, I might hold back a little bit um, in terms of that particular combination. That said, I haven't seen that many candles by Harry Slatkin that go in a generic men's cologne kind of direction, now that I think about it. That Bath and Body Works, this would definitely be a men's cologne on paper. Um, Kringle, definitely a men's cologne, probably Yankee. But actually, now that I think about it, I, I don't, Harry Slatkin tends to not go traditional men's cologne or traditional female cologne or female perfume. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that he tends to keep things in the floral, tree, gourmand kind of realms. Fruity too, and fruity floral, yeah? I don't know that he does like the perfume so much. Laura Slatkin, I think, goes a little bit more perfumey. Anyway, close parentheses. On paper, it looks like a cologne, and it's really not. This is very fresh, warm, authentic, and botanical. It's all of those things. Yes, it's a very strong tree fragrance. 
And if I were just smelling it, whew, I would say that it does smell like spruce and pine. Is that what this, yeah, spruce and pine. That's what it smells like. Spruce has a very like traditional, deep kind of coniferous, like Christmas tree kind of smell to it. Pine for me smells a bit brassier, yeah? So this, and that's what I mean by this candle going a little bit more warm. There is a spruce note and then there's the pine which opens it up kind of in a much more warm direction. Um, and then the bergamot here, I think rather than it being like a dried bergamot oil that would go toward like the perfume and cologne dimension, I actually think this smells fairly juicy. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not a fruity candle per se, but the bergamot here is not, um, yeah, it, it's, it's not like a cosmetic bergamot, you know, um, or a personal fragrance bergamot. It's like, yeah, it's a fresh bergamot or pomelo or something like that. I mean, you can, you can, you sense the citrus and the citrus is a warm, juicy kind of citrus. I would say not even a lot of like rind. I mean, it's just true like the flesh of in, of a citrus, of a beautiful like warm orange-like citrus. And rather than it taking over the fragrance, and I've noticed this for certain fragrances of Harry's, that the bergamot note that he uses is so fresh that it kind of lights these coniferous trees from within a little bit. And I've mentioned this before, kind of like when you have a lit Christmas tree and you bury the lights like deep into the tree so that you can't actually see the light bulbs, but they kind of like light up the tree and are a presence within the tree without it like looking so obvious. That's kind of what the bergamot is doing to these two different trees. It's not taking the stage and being like, hey, I'm a balsam and an orange candle, you know? I mean, it's just saying like, it's a balsam and a pine that's also fresh and vibrant and green and botanical and kind of like warm and glowing. And I think it's that pine with the connection of like the fresh juicy citrus that like I said, is opening it up in a very like fresh, almost fruity kind of way, yeah? Patchouli. Here's where I'm not sure. There may be, and this is what is so interesting, there may be like a high refined perfumey patchouli in this. So for instance, Fraser Fur, which is a big seller for Times, and is also, Kringle has a dupe of it, which is the Christmas fragrance. Both of those actually have a great deal of like musk underneath the tree. Um, and as with the orange note, those musks, are where they shouldn't, they shouldn't be obvious. They're supporting cast and they're lending like a depth and a richness to the tree and the way that the bergamot here is kind of like brightening it, then the perfume note is kind of like deepening it and richening it, yeah? Um, what I think is impressive about this is that Harry has added bergamot and patchouli and they could very easily go men's cologne and kind of overwhelm the coniferous and take it into a generic place. And the bergamot and the patchouli are like separated out and are not, they're not firing on the same level or the same range. So the bergamot, like I said, is not, if it was like a personal fragrance oil kind of vibe, then it would be firing on the same range as the patchouli and they would both be kind of firing as like a personal, especially men's fragrance kind of formula. But because the bergamot is fresh and it's really kind of almost botanically in the same category as the coniferous tree rather than the perfume, personal fragrance part of it, because they're separated and they're firing in different places, it divides, it dilutes, it cuts that like possible personal fragrance like threat basically to the candle. And I think allows both of them to enhance the trees without like taking it into a different personal fragrance place. That was a lot of words. And I don't know if that makes sense. 
What was really interesting about this, actually I've got this because I'm gonna do a review on these two little Lafco candles that I had actually from last year. Um, they were Christmas candles. This one here is Woodland Spruce. And I was burning this in the guest bathroom, uh, 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 I mean not at the same time as this candle, but like within the same week. And there was a day where I burned this one so long that it was starting to really like pick up in terms of strength and throw. I was even noticing it outside of the bathroom, which was really impressive for this kind of a Lafco candle. Um, and as I was smelling it, first my first thought was like, where's the tree coming from? And the second thought was, I was, I thought I burned out my homeworks candle. So I had been burning this that morning and I burned it out or blew it out. And then when I was starting to smell this one, I'm like, wait, did I leave the homeworks candle burning? So actually this one smelled a great deal like this one did. And if I smell this, this actually has a much stronger cologne or perfume personal fragrance with the tree. And the notes on this one are birch bark, spruce, palo santo, but then when I looked online, it has like bergamot in it too. So this one actually smells much more like you would expect this one to smell with the bergamot and the patchouli. This one for sure smells like it is a pine, spruce, bergamot, and white patchouli. And interestingly, when they were both burned, they actually smelled much more similar to each other. So that's my only pause in saying that they're, that the bergamot and the white patchouli like don't like fire in the same way that you would expect them to fire just because once they were burned, they actually did smell pretty similar. So I'm, it's definitely not a lie that there's bergamot and white patchouli in here. I just think that Harry has figured out a way to make that bergamot a little bit less canned, a little bit less synthetic, and a little less personal fragrance. And because of that, the entire fragrance has an authenticity and a brightness that otherwise perhaps it would not have. I really loved it. I thought it was fresh and it performed decently. I burned this all the way down. Look at that, all the way down, relatively no sooting. This has been, honestly, the Homeworks candles have been fairly good in terms of the sooting. I've been impressed. The ones that I've been burning over this year, would I like more strength and throw? 100%. The pour on this was July of 2023. Um, so I do think, and I, I'm not an expert on homeworks candles, but it does seem to me like the pours of 2022 were particularly bad and that 2023 has been marginally better, although like in a fairly uneven fashion. Um, yeah, burned like a dream and it was consistent. Every time I burned this up, it smelled the same, it projected the same. I, I kept it in the hurricane for almost all of its time and I was getting a strong seven from it. I would say every time I burned it up. Um, now, that was in the hurricane. So if you don't have a hurricane, adjust your expectations, you may get up to one point less than that. So think that you're gonna get at least a six on this particular candle, and it may be more than that. There were moments where I thought it was maybe a 7.5 in that hurricane. Could it have been stronger? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in a hurricane, you'd like to see a candle with four wicks really be pressing up, pushing up into that nine range, or at least like eight to nine. It should be there, it should really be there. Um, but I guess Homeworks hasn't been that way for a bit. And since we're all kind of grading on a much, like a much reduced continuum for the expectations here for Homeworks, I think that seven is actually quite decent. And a lot of people would be very happy with that. A lot of it was the scent profile. I mean, it was a great pine and spruce and it was bright. And because of the bergamot opening itself up into the high range. And so when you have a high range citrus and a high range like pine and spruce, you have at least all the elements of a fragrance that should project pretty well, all things considered. And this one did, it was quite decent. Would I repurchase this one? Yeah, I would, I would. It doesn't quite get under my skin the way that like Fraser Fur from Times does, but at the same time, it also is not quite the same tree vibe. This is a tree vibe that's like a little bit more removed from like the traditional Christmas tree, December tree. This one would be a very nice one 
and the time that I burned it, which was like the first week of January, where a lot of us are thinking of like citruses a little bit more in more of a cleansing and new year brightness kind of way. And with that, and with the trees and the outdoor kind of rusticity of this, without any of the traditional Christmas spices, et cetera, um, it really just goes into a really nice like January space. And I think it's nice, I really do. I don't know who bought this when it came out as the TSV. If you did, let me know what it is that you thought about it. I don't know how it sold. I don't even know how people received it. I tried to do a search on YouTube but like some people like referenced it, but then they would say things like, I didn't buy that one or whatever else, you know? And so I just kind of get, I, I don't, like I said, I don't know who bought it. And frankly, if it was two years ago, it may have been quite bad in terms of its performance. But this one that I picked up at TJ Maxx was not bad at all. Not bad. I like to see this direction. It's baby steps for Harry Slatkin here and Homeworks, but this is definitely a step in the right direction I'll take it. I know a lot of you will too. So that's what we've got. Frosted white pine. I'll definitely keep it around in the back of my mind as um, a great tree fragrance or at least a good fragrance from Harry Slacken that's a little bit better than pleasant and adequate and therefore probably one that I would consider repurchasing. That's what I've got for you, my friends. Stay tuned because I am in the next day or so gonna do these little Lafco ones. Um, it, these are the first times I've ever burned Lafco candles. Um, I don't know that I was terribly impressed, but I wasn't completely unimpressed either. So we'll talk about them um, before I discard. I'll see you guys in the next one.